One of the most picturesque castles in the whole of Britain is found in the Western Highlands of Scotland, situated next to where three sea locks meet. Aelan Donnan is a castle that finds itself as one of the most photographed, and the scenery is spectacular. It's been the scene of many films, including James Bond, however it's a castle that is steeped in Scottish history, clan history, and incredible tales of warring families and conflict. Join us today as we look at the world's most beautiful castle, Aelin Donnan, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The spectacular Aelin Donnan has a rich and long history. It's thought that during the 6th century, a small early Christian monastic group was formed on the island, and that Christian buildings could have been made, however little remains of this today. Extensive castle building began during the medieval period, during the reign of Alexander II, a huge curtain wall was created that enclosed and cut off the island. Aelin Donnan itself stands on a small island that holds a strong defensive position, in particular against a possible Viking or Norse invasion, guarding locks that led into the North Sea. A local legend states that the son of a Matheson clan chief had the power to communicate with birds, and after gaining the respect of the Scottish king, he was asked to fortify the island to defend Scotland. The island at the time with no castle on it became home to a number of different clans, but was initially owned by the Mackenzies. The Mackenzies state how they allegedly sheltered Robert the Bruce at Aelan Donnan during the winter of 1306, and it was not explicitly used during the wars of Scottish independence. It does have a bloody history, with in 1331 a series of 50 executions taking place at the castle. The Earl of Moray had sent officers to say he was visiting the castle and area, and to protect the fortification and surroundings, 50 criminals had their heads cut off and displayed high on the castle's walls. So it's not just a castle for decoration or for grandeur, but it did have a brutal side to it. It was a castle which was also linked to rebellion, but at this point there was some fortification created after the curtain wall, and there was a tower house or keep placed against the wall at the high point of the island in the 14th century. The vaulted ground floor was split into two, with stairs in the north wall giving access to a first floor hall. Later over the years, the outer curtain wall was not used, and was left to create a smaller enclosure with an entrance from the east. It's believed this smaller area would have been easier to defend, but there were two other buildings also added, with a small house made inside of the bailey as well. The castle was at the centre of much clan feuding. During the reign of James I, he travelled to Inverness to meet major chiefs, and the young Mackenzie chief Alexander went, but during the meeting the king arrested many of the chiefs, but spared the young Alexander. Alexander supported the king in his attempt to defeat rebellions, but in the late 15th century, the Mackenzies were considered rebels as their successive chiefs had supported different rebellions. Aelan Donnan was besieged in the early 1500s as a dispute emerged about who owned the castle. In 1539, Donald Gorm MacLeod of Slate laid waste to the MacLeods of Dunvegan on Sky, and he raided into Mackenzie lands. He realised Aelan Donnan was weak, and he attacked surprising the garrison. There were only two people inside the castle at the time, a constable and a warden, but when the attack began, the son of a former constable arrived, and slaughtered many MacDonalds at the gates. Arrows were launched that killed the constable and the warden, but Donald Gorm was hit by an arrow, wounding him fatally, and the warring MacDonalds then retreated. More disputes broke out, and Aileen Donnan was used as a base for a sea battle, but as time went on the castle continued to be used in feuds. During the Civil War, the castle's custodian supported Charles I, but after the King's execution, the Parliament of Scotland said a garrison should be based at Aelan Donnan. This did not go down well with the locals, and the garrison men were driven away by the angry locals. During the Jacobite Uprising of 1715, Aelan Donnan was used, and was of great military interest. It was garrisoned by the government when the rising began, but the government soldiers were soon ousted by the men of Kintail, who rallied before marching off to fight in further battles. Apparently, they even danced on the roof of the castle before departing, and a painting inside the fortification shows this. The Jacobite army which was led by John Erskine, the Earl of Mar, at the Battle of Sheriffmuir, 
was around 12,000 strong and outnumbered government forces. But he was a poor military leader and he did not take advantage. Both of the sides claimed victory, however the Jacobites lost their momentum and failed to join forces with their allies in the north of England. They tried to capture Edinburgh Castle but failed and later Prince James who arrived from France saw the cause was lost and left. There have been a number of artefacts at the castle that were believed to have been used at the Battle of Sheriff Muir, including a dagger, however a number of Macrae's, a group who were allied with the Mackenzies were killed. After the failure the Jacobites looked towards Spain for support, who were the enemies of Britain and the French. The Duke of Ormond then led an invasion fleet from France with 300 Spanish soldiers and they took and occupied Aylan Donnan. The expected uprising of the Highlanders did not happen and the main Spanish invasion force was nowhere to be seen. The Royal Navy dispatched warships there to the area and HMS Worcester, HMS Flamborough and HMS Enterprise were anchored just off the castle on the 10th of May 1719 to negotiate a truce. When the Spanish soldiers fired at the small boat sent to negotiate, all of the three ships opened fire on the castle bombarding it. Then in the evening, a small group of men were sent ashore to capture the castle. They did this very easily. They managed to overthrow the Spanish soldiers based there and capture 343 barrels of powder and 52 barrels of musket shot. The castle was then demolished using gunpowder before the remaining Spanish soldiers were defeated a month later. The castle we see today is a rebuild. John McRae Gilstrap brought the castle in 1911 and he was descended from a long line of the McRae clan. This was the first time that the McRae's held land in the Kintail area. Originally they wished to maintain the castle, employing a local stonemason to clear the site of rubble, but before long a plan was drawn up to rebuild the castle to how it looked before it was destroyed. It was constructed from rubble left and it cost around a quarter of a million pounds. The restoration was created to bring the castle back to how it previously looked and the bridge was also built to bring people across to visit Aylan Donnan. The modern castle today features many of the usual rooms and elements of a castle that you would expect to see. It has a kitchen which is used to feed those who attend banquets. There's a portcullis along with many other elaborate rooms. It's a beautiful castle that today doesn't serve any military purpose. Its beauty is in the surrounding area of the locks and the fact it overlooks these in spectacular fashion. Aylan Donnan is a castle that is rich in clan history and it's a castle which is definitely worth a visit. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel please make sure to subscribe and once again thank you so much for watching.